All right, so let's just have a look at some tweets first uh, regarding uh, O3 Mini. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go through a couple interesting aspects that I think are pretty interesting about O3 Mini. So the first thing is, is sort of this comparison of O3 with R1, clearly. As you can see, the physics behind uh, the code that uh, O3 Mini generated for this and Deep One is different and it works much better in, in O3 Mini. So the prompt initially was right to write a Python program that shows a ball bouncing inside a spinning hexagon. And the ball should be affected by, by gravity, friction, and it must bounce off the rotating walls realistically. So so those are the three sort of constraints that, that they have to work with. And what's interesting is you can totally very clearly see the bounce effectively working on the O3 Mini while in DeepSeek R1, it's sort of like, it's bouncing, yes, but it's behaving weirdly. There is no gravity. Gravity clearly is, is downwards in O3 Mini version, but you can see it's behaving really odd. I wonder what the logic is that's generating this sort of uh, artifact effectively. So, but but yeah, as you can see, it one-shotted this as well. Um, I think this was interesting too, because uh, this is hard to gauge how accurate this is because it's right a Python script of a ball bouncing inside a Tesseract. A Tesseract, for those of you who are unaware, is a four-dimensional hypercube, or cube rather, because a hypercube is for like at least three dimensions, uh, more than four three dimensions. So this is effectively a cube in, in, in 4D, 4D and the ball is sort of bouncing in this four dimensional object. And this is, uh, it's really hard to sort of, sort of figure out the boundaries, right? Because uh, what a boundary is within a 4D projection into the 3D world is gonna be very different. I'm not certain which those bounces are. And uh, I don't know if this person actually tested that out. So, but, but it's still pretty cool to see. The other important uh, type of sort of uh, test that I'm seeing is 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 this one. I, I don't know if you can see it clearly. It's it's playing auto at 720. Yeah, but the ID. God dang it! All right, perfect. Yeah, over here. So as you can see, uh, the, the 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 task was to animate falling letters with realistic physics, right? I, I here O3 Mini does fall behind because if you notice clearly uh, closely. The letters fall down and sort of, you know, bounce around in O3 Mini, but they don't interact with each other. That is handled really well by Claude 3.5 Sonnet and DeepSeek R1. What's really interesting to think about, and this, I'm just going to put this out there, and the, re the reason it's actually impressive is Claude 3.5 Sonnet is not a reasoning model, while DeepSeek R1 and O3 Mini are both reasoning models. So it is extremely impressive with how Claude 3.5 Sonnet behaves be, and, and actually works, which is why it reinforces why I feel like, and the fact that it's even more superior to both of these is incredible because this is months behind. We have had Claude 3.5 Sonnet for so long right now and O3 Mini just launched two days ago and three three days ago and DeepSeek R1 launched uh, like a couple weeks ago. So really, really impressive. I can't wait for Claude 4 because 4 is gonna be incredible. Uh, that's gonna crush things. And so clearly I think that's why uh, Claude is, I would, in objectively, I feel like that's better. And which is why I, I, I use Claude a lot more than uh, DeepSeek R1 and O3 Mini. DeepSeek R1 because their website crashes a lot and um, I haven't run a local version of it myself all the time. I don't run it often. So uh, also the product features in Claude are far superior to other ones too, especially the project structure. And yeah. Yes, this is, I think, the most important tweet, basically. Seemingly somewhat lost in the noise, Sam Altman tweeted, saying, on many coding tasks, O3 Mini will outperform O1 at a massive cost reduction. I think that is incredible. And that is, that is I think, what's, it, what's amazing uh, for, for, for this. O3 Mini is, first of all, free for, all, for free. That, that's another big thing, right? And the fact that O3 Mini is a better O1 in, in most cases of coding specifically, I've, I've tested it, it's pretty good. It's really, really good is incredible. That's that's amazing. That's exactly what we wanted. And what's interesting is the reason it's so cheap is why they were able to make it free, right? And I, I don't know how much of this is cons uh, like uh, like theorizing, but I feel like they wouldn't have made it free if it wasn't for DeepSeek R1. I feel like DeepSeek R1's uh, release specifically forced OpenAI to make this model free. And that's incredible. I, I think that's a really good thing. So yeah, 
So some more some more cool stuff. I think this is amazing. They they effectively uh, wrote, uh, asked O3 Mini to write a Python script to be used in Blender. Blender is a 3D modeling and animation engine. Effectively, uh, it's an amazing tool, and so you can sort of simulate uh, things like particle simulations or fluid simulations like this. And so you write a Python script for it, and then you can do this. And uh, O3 Mini was asked to make one like this, and it created something really good. So I think this is also really impressive, too. And it also this is important. I think the 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 the, the hallucination rate reduction to an 0.8 percent is really good. That means it's just it's not like it's not gonna not gonna hallucinate, but it's probably the it's the model that hallucinates the least. I think that's a really good uh, metric to go off of as well. So. Yeah, and then this was the game of life. Another Conway's uh, example, code example, is sort of having Conway's game of life, which is usually flat on a surface. They put it on, effectively, uh, a sphere. And and so this is really cool. This is, I think, very impressive that it's able to sort of figure that out. One-shotting this is very, very impressive. Um, that Those are really cool things. Yeah, and so I think this. Oh, is someone actually? I was just talking about the the letters knock each other around. So the physics between the letters also exists. That's exactly what I was talking about, and I kind of bookmarked that too. Uh, it is months early, and this yes, this brings the point of what I was trying to say is yes, Claude three point five is months early, and it's still I. It's my favorite at coding too because especially we don't get to use that at work, right? Uh, or not at least the the, the, the current version of it on uh, their website. Uh, but on my personal projects, I've been loving to use Claude a lot because uh, I think the product is amazing. It allows, there's a feature called um, projects effectively where you can dump your code base. And, and in that code base, you sort of can then query, ask questions and then modify it. Uh, that is very powerful because you rarely, that's what I was thinking about all these tests is, you can come up with so many of these one-shot tests like, oh, start from scratch and do this. And that's amazing that they can do that. But oftentimes that's not what you want as a software developer also, or even an AI engineer. You usually have a huge code base that you already are working on, or you have or, or you have been writing some code for specifically an idea, right? And then you sort of want the AI to help you do it, not do it for you. Or at least uh, currently that's how uh, these um, LLMs can be leveraged, in my opinion. And so that's the real world test, in my opinion. So all the benchmarks, they're impressive and they're good, but uh, I really don't think uh, they're the best way of measuring uh, how useful they are for coding. And yeah, I think this person <laughs> put it really well. I think this was really good. Like general advice, you ask for Claude front end planning, you use O3, then you implement the front end with Claude. Although I I would say the front end using using O3 for front end is actually really good because uh, I ran out of some uh, ran out of tokens uh, on the weekend as well with Claude, and I started to uh, and I was like, ah, oh, I good. I have to use O3 now. Come on, man. But but it, it turned out to be good. It's really really good. I, I really like it actually. It's a really good alternative to when when I run out of tokens on Claude, which is pretty rare. But 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 either way, I think it's a really good solution. Um, and yeah, the O3 Mini versus O3 Mini High. O3 Mini is the the less reasoning version of O3 Mini High, and I've honestly not even touched uh, the 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 non high version. The high one is much better. Uh, I would, I, I feel like, and and it's been especially with the benchmarks and stuff. So I really don't think that's uh how uh, no one's actually even using O3 Mini. So that that is pretty much true. Also, I, this one was weird. Uh, the benefit of O3 Mini is that it's often faster than 4.0. No, it's not faster than 4.0 because O3 Mini actually reasons and thinks. So it thinks, and that thinking takes time. So your answer comes in a little late, actually, compared to 4.0. 4.0 just gives you an answer immediately. It's not a reasoning model. Uh, while O3 Mini is. So I, I, I'm i not, I bookmarked it because I wanted to state that that is kind of false. That's not true. Um, but yeah, I think those were all the tweets that sort of I think I wanted to talk about specifically because uh, that's uh, the news that's going on with O3. And uh, yeah, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, talk about was, of course, the benchmarks. These benchmarks are really good because they sort of tell you where uh, these things excel. And specifically O3 Mini High and when it's compared to O1 over here, it's really good because uh, OpenAI uh, O3 Mini is nearly globally equal to, to it, and then it's very close to reasoning. It's it beats it at, at coding, by the way. It's it's worse off in mathematics. So if you want to do mathematics with it, yeah, you'd be probably better off using O1. 
or maybe even DeepSeek actually are one. But yeah, other than that, it sort of is pretty darn good at everything else. And even IF average or instruction following average is actually pretty good too. So O3 mini being, and, and it's extremely cheap if I remember too. Let me have a look at, uh, I remember I pulled the numbers too. I did a comparison. Yeah. So O3, I was looking at the cost per token and all that. And from, from my estimates, it seems that O3 mini is O1 is approximately 24 times more expensive than O3 mini. <laughs> and if you consider cash usage, which we are probably only going to use within their APIs because you're, I think you're using uh, uh, sort of their batch APIs and that's 50 times more, more uh, O1 is 50 times more expensive than O3 mini, which means O3 mini is extremely cheap while performing near perfect performance when compared to O1. Uh, but yeah, and also it's faster. O3 mini is faster than O1. It may not be as fast, it's, it's not faster than 4O, but 4O is not a reasoning model. O1 is a reasoning model and O3, O, O1, O3, O3 mini is amazing. And I just can't, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see O3. Like we have mini, O3 mini, O3 is gonna be amazing like it's gonna blow us blow everything out the water and uh i think that's gonna be an exciting time so so yeah so yeah hope you liked it and yeah um uh, make sure you like and subscribe and i will see you next time <laughs>